Hey, it's Reed Florine here, and I was on the Digital Marketer blog earlier today, and I found a new blog post by Ryan Dice called A Strategic Plan for Business Implementation, Three Steps to Getting Business Growth Done. Now, what this article covers is the main overview is that you need to have a good system in place to make sure that your ideas are being prioritized intelligently and implemented implemented efficiently. So it's a pretty heady thing, but it's it's very important for anyone that's doing any sort of business stuff, whether it's online or offline. I think this can apply to a lot of businesses. So the business growth plan step number one is align your team to a single goal. Now, you might be a one-person business or you might have a, a team of like 50 employees like Ryan has, but this is something that you need to really understand. So I'm going to just open this up and we'll cover this. So Ryan says that goals should be sequential and never simultaneous. So you should be focusing on one main thing at a time. He prefers to have those focuses be over the course of 12 weeks, so one full quarter. And then he does talk about the danger of good ideas. And he says that good ideas have killed far more companies than bad ideas and failure is more often caused by trying to implement too many good ideas at once. And, and I would agree with that. I, I've seen a lot of people over and over, you know, jump from thing to thing to thing, and they don't really sit down and focus on one specific aspect of their business. And they, they just try to kind of throw spaghetti at the wall, and, and they have a lot of problems with that, and things don't go well. So Ryan has a few suggestions on how to organize and prioritize your ideas. And so there's only four ways that you can grow a company. And Ryan says that you can focus on acquisition. So that'd be like getting new leads. You can focus on activation. So that's converting your leads into customers. So your existing leads. And uh, there's monetization. So that's increasing the average order of your existing customers. So maybe you're going to have, have higher prices that they could have, and there's retention. So that's reducing your refunds and, and your churn rates. So maybe you have a, a membership site, for instance, you're gonna reduce the amount of people that are canceling their membership. Or maybe you have some products where people have asked for, for a refund, you might hire some sort of specialist to help you uh, reduce your refund rates by talking to those customers and seeing what's up and seeing if you can fix the issues they have. And he suggests, that you choose one of these four columns to focus on for 12 weeks. And then he introduces what he calls the ICE framework. And so ICE is an acronym. Uh, it stands for impact, confidence, and ease. And so impact is basically how big of an impact is this gonna have on your business? So like a one means it's not gonna do much and a 10 means it's gonna be ma massive changes in, in your business. And um, all three of these are graded on a one through 10 scale. Then confidence is the next part. So how confident are you that this is going to work, that this is going to you know, in increase your business, help you make more money? And then ease is like how difficult or how easy is it for you to implement this? So the easier it is, the higher the score. So he gave a couple examples. Uh, one was testing like the, the landing page of their blog and they hadn't done that before. So their ice score, they figured that would have a big impact. They figured um, they were very confident, so it was um, they, they thought it was 10 points for each. And then uh, ease of use of doing it, they thought was a 9. And so you take those um, 3 and you add them up. So 10 plus 10 plus 9 is 29. You divide that by 3, and they came up with a score of 9.7, which is like a no-brainer. They should totally do that. Um, it's something that they probably could have done in like a day or so of just... Uh, doing it you know maybe it took some time to plan out maybe i don't know if they changed any graphics or anything but they could get some the ball rolling really quickly then the second example was launching a podcast and so they gave that a score of 10 they thought that would have a huge impact they weren't sure if it would work they gave it a confidence level of two and the ease of use factor they gave one so they added those together 10 plus 2 plus 1 was 13 they divided that 13 by 3 and they came up with a score of 4.3. They still implemented it, and uh, I think it's Perpetual Traffic is the name of their podcast, and it's done incredibly well. So it was definitely worth doing. Now I will go over uh, 
business growth plan number two, and that's work in focus sprints, so not exhausting marathons. And so he says that people, teams, and companies perform best with short bursts of intense work followed by rest. And, and I'd agree with that. Uh, you know, if you've ever gone on like vacation, you notice that that week before you get a ton of work done because you don't want to be focused on doing any work while you're on, on your trip. And I noticed that in school. So for instance, at my school, we had six weeks on or so, and then one week off. You know, we'd have the week off and I'd get a ton of work done that last week or two before we'd have the, they were called block, block breaks. And we'd have that uh, break time. And so I could do whatever I wanted during, during the break. We'd, I'd be at home and, you know, could play video games or watch movies or whatever I wanted to do. And so I would get a ton of work done, uh, you know, like the week before. And so I've noticed that with that, I've noticed that with vacations, I've noticed that by doing um, like the Pomodoro method where you've got like 25 minutes of work time and then you have like five minute break you can get a ton of activity done in, in 25 minutes if you set a timer and you're not checking your email and you're not checking your social media so that's basically what this is talking about is you need to work in short sprints in that it's not a marathon um, because that's what works better for people then uh, business growth plan number three is work in 12 week seasons now, I've seen this um, in other things, too, including uh, there's a very popular book called The 12-Week Year, and that's something I recommend people pick up. But that's basically what uh, Ryan is uh, telling people to do. You focus on one uh, of these uh, growth uh, levels uh, once a year for 12 weeks. So th those growth areas that we're talking about were the uh, four areas that you grow a company, so the acquisition, activision, activation monetization and retention are the four ways that you focus so you focus on one of those for you know basically three months for 12 weeks and so he talks about the five seasons of implementation and so basically the first part you're you're kind of learning you're learning you don't just learn for the sake of learning but you're learning specific things so maybe you're going to focus on acquisition and so you might be focused on uh, you know, getting traffic to your website and getting those people to sign up for, say, an email list. So you're going to be focused on, you know, how do I get traffic? How do I, you know, set up a squeeze page? How do I you know, get people to opt into my autoresponder? Those types of things are what you're going to be focused on. Then the implementation. This is where you implement what you've learned. So you, you t maybe you found a course on you know, how to create this lead magnet. Okay, so you make the lead magnet right after you've, you've gone through the course. Maybe it, it talked about, you know, get something that you can demonstrate in five minutes to people and they can actually take action on it right away. So you, you've got that and that's, that's your lead magnet. Then you might get some other training on how to set up the squeeze page. Then you actually go in there and you set up the squeeze page once you've learned it. Then you might get some other training. Maybe it's on, I don't know, how to get traffic from maybe pay-per-click search engines. And so you start driving some pay-per-click traffic to your squeeze page. Well, now, you know, later on that day, you've got the lead magnet, you've got the squeeze page, and you're starting to get traffic and getting those people to opt in to your email newsletter. Then you can move on to the next step, which could be, you know, testing and tweaking things and, and fixing things up. So what he recommends you do is once you've implemented something, celebrate, have, you know, take a little break, have, have a beer, have, you know, go out, do something fun to celebrate the big wins when you've accomplished some, some major part that's going to have an impact in your business. And then it's all about optimization. And that's, you might be split testing things and trying out new things and trying different traffic sources and lots of different things to further ramp this up. And then when it's all done, when you're done with the 12 weeks, you, you can rest and repeat. A lot of people, uh, you know, take like that one, that week off, similar to the block breaks that I was talking about that I had in school, where they would take a week off and maybe go on a trip or, or do something where they just have a little bit of R&R &R and take a break from implementing stuff. And then they would move on to the, the next phase. So that first phase, they talk about acquisition. Now the next phase might be activation and that's converting your existing leads into customers so that next season you might be working on you know creating a, a ton of different uh, email follow-up series that are going to help you get more sales you might be 
focus on uh, like some product creation, those types of things to, to get people to buy more from you and spend more money with you. Then he talked about three business growth mindsets. And so the first one was patiently and patient thinking. And so I'll open this up and that's basically, you need to have a sense of urgency while putting in the work, while being patient for the results. So if you've ever tried to maybe lose weight or gain muscle and then you might work out for, for a couple days and nothing changes. You might work out for a few weeks and nothing changes. And then you've worked out for a couple months and you start seeing massive results. Well, it's because you stuck with it and did stuff intensely day after day after day that you start getting the results. Because a lot of people, they start doing stuff and within a couple weeks or a month, they drop out and they, they quit. And they, they, they're so close to, to getting the rewards, but, but they don't stick with it. And I know I've personally done that a bunch myself. And I know a lot of people uh, do that in their lives as well. Then the, the second part is having high impact thinking. And Ryan talks about how business growth is a lot like physics. So I think it's Newton's second law uh, of motion. And it's basically force equals mass times acceleration. So yeah, something might be real rapid fire and easy to implement, like uh, split testing something on their blog. So that would be kind of like a kind of like a bullet. Um, it, it has a lot of like high velocity and it's really fast. And so it's very quick and easy to implement and you can see some massive growth from that. Then another thing could be kind of slow, big and massive. And that might be kind of like a steamroller uh, in your business where it takes a while to get it built up and get it going. But it, once you have it figured out and it's working and it's, it's being successful for you, that's like the podcast that they set up where it took a while in the beginning to get it going. But then once they got it going, it's basically an unstoppable force. Then the third part was leadership thinking. So you are the leader in your organization, even if you're the only person in your organization or you have a huge team, you're still the leader. You need to get your hands dirty and lead by example. You need to do the most work of your team so you can show them kind of what you expect and that you expect them to do great things as well. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this blog post from Ryan. What I would strongly recommend you do is underneath this video, I'm actually linking to the actual blog post. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, uh, but be sure to check out Ryan's post because I found it very useful and I probably didn't quite do it justice because I was doing this very quickly uh, just to see uh, how things can be done. But click below and check out Ryan's post.